welcome back to The Wellness Check. Today, I'm going to share with you something that I learned yesterday, a phrase that I learned yesterday from one of my clients, and I love learning new things from my clients. This is a term called the gray rock method. And technically, it's something that I've been talking about for over 15 years. I just didn't know that there was a term for it. And I'm so thankful that that there is now. And I'm curious if you have heard of the term the gray rock, gray rock method. The gray rock method is something that is used when you are in a relationship or around someone who um, societally, the, the, the buzzword is toxic, but more so shows the narcissistic traits, whether they have the symptomology of narcissism or they have a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. This is where gray rock method comes in. And I'm going to share with you a couple interventions that have to do with gray rocking and when and how they are appropriate. So there's kind of like a a double-edged sword with this conversation that yes, these techniques can be helpful in a lot of situations. My disclaimer is, is that you cannot use them in every situation because some situations will require you to really speak up and be very firm and use your voice and have boundaries. Um, especially when it comes to keeping yourself or someone safe or big life events that need attention to detail. But in general, aside from those things on the day-to-day encounters, whether this is a spouse, a family member, a coworker, or a friend, these are gray rock methods that you can do to help neutralize the volatility of those interactions. Something to keep in mind, we want to really watch our body language and our tone of voice. We want to minimize conversation in general as much as we can. So things like talking about um, exciting things for your future, talking about really great things that are happening um, in your job or in your personal life, or even talking about hardships from your past. The more information we give to these individuals, the more potential ammunition they have to give back to us in in way of uh, misinterpreting it or twisting it around and changing it to a way that makes you maybe reconsider or second guess yourself or um, in some way or another mitigate your own self-confidence, right? So even if it's something positive, they can intercede with that and, and, and deflate the balloon, so to speak, take the joy out of it or make you feel bad for enjoying something. Or they could also intercept that future exciting event and make sure that it doesn't happen one way or another to deprive you of something that you were looking forward to. When it comes to the past, all of that is ammunition as well. For years, I have worked with women and men with various types of relationships where the the person that they're dealing with with the narcissistic tendencies uses very vulnerable parts of their past to hurt them. So they might bring up difficulties um, in one's family of origin. They might bring up someone's death. They might bring up um, an, an, an inadequacy or an embarrassment of yours as a way to remind you that you're not okay. In general, what we're saying is try to minimize conversation in these terms. When it comes to body language, we also want to watch how we're demonstrating or what we're demonstrating to these individuals. We know that those with narcissistic personality traits thrive on getting a reaction out of us. They really want their words, their actions, their demeanor to impact us to make us nervous, to make us scared, to make us feel like things are unpredictable, and to make them feel like they are in control. So just as much as our language has to do with that, with that, so does our body language. To keep a neutral stance is important. You know, we can do nods, we can do smiles. We're not overtly being, um, disrespectful. You know, we're not shying away from eye contact. We're not becoming very quiet and meek and come and be, you know, getting into the corner at all. We're just desensitizing and neutralizing the conversation. So that means we don't need to engage. 
There are situations where we need to, and we talked about that already, but in most situations, we don't need to engage. We don't have to answer their questions. We don't have to ask questions. We want to keep our responses pretty short, one to two words. And if they keep asking and keep asking, we say the same one to two words. These are skills that can help to neutralize a volatile conversation. Other things that we want to look out for um, is the sharing of our opinions. And again, time and place is appropriate and matters. But anything that is of interest to us can be turned against us. So we want to stay away from the obvious things like politics, um, discussions or differences in religion. If these things are different than the individual that we're trying to create healthy boundaries with, then that's just going to set us up for failure. So those are the big things. We have finances, we have um, parenting, we have the ways in which you socialize. Are you allowed to hang out with other people? Are you not? Is there a jealousy component to this? There are so many dynamics and intricacies within these relationships that can make it difficult for us to feel safe and predictable, like we're in a predictable place. The gray rock method, now that there's a term for it that I know about, can help with this. So just remember, there are techniques to using gray rock. The whole entire idea of it is to help neutralize and desensitize the volatility of the conversation while keeping you safe, physically, mentally, and and emotionally. In situations where you can't do that or that is not recommended because it might not keep you safe or it might impact someone else's safety, then we have to talk about how do we create those boundaries? How do we interact with someone with these tendencies? By using our voice, by standing really, you know, tall, 10 toes on the ground sort of deal. And that's a, that's a whole entire other um, conversation to have. I might do another video on that one later. But I'm so excited that there's something called gray rocking, and I'm so thankful that my client educated me on that, and I'm going to be using that term a lot. And if you are an individual who has practiced it, let me know in the comments. Let me know how it feels, if, um, if it feels empowering to a certain degree, if it feels scary to a certain degree. I'd love to know your use of it and how it feels. As always, thank you for checking in with your wellness, and I'll see you soon.